WWE Survivor Series 2018 Preview. Welcome back to the ECB Wrestling Talk channel, your main source for wrestling news, topics, discussions, previews, all that kind of good stuff. I am your host, Alexis Carrillo, and we're just a few days away from Survivor Series, and frankly, there's not so many days, so many weeks, or so many times for that matter that you can say that WWE, that the entire landscape of WWE has changed. Now, I'm not going to go as far as to say the entire landscape has changed, but most of the main parts involving WWE have changed in the past few days due to, due to some certain circumstances. But now, the entire Survivor Series card has been flip-flopped around. Now, Survivor Series is taking place this Sunday in Los Angeles, California. So let's get right into the preview and predictions for each of the matches. The Cruiserweight Championship is on the line. This is the one match where it's not brand versus brand. Where Buddy Murphy puts his title on the line against Mustafa Ali. One thing... Uh, that I, I'm going to be honest with you, is the fact that I do not watch 205 Live. I'm not interested in watching 205 Live because it's mostly geared towards wrestling and not so much story and character development. That's what I've gotten from watching 205 Live in the past. So, in terms of this match, I'm going to go with Buddy Murphy retaining his Cruiserweight Championship. He just won it at... Super Showdown. So, he retains this Sunday at Survivor Series. Now, heading into the main topic, or the main uh, plot for this entire Survivor Series pay-per-view is Brand versus Brand. Brand Supremacy on the line, Raw versus SmackDown, and we've got ourselves seven inter-brand, inter-promotional matches lined up for Survivor Series this Sunday. We've got ourselves the ridiculous SmackDown Tag Teams, or SmackDown 5 Tag Teams, Tag Team, Elimination, Survivor Series match, whatever. Brand vs. Brand, it's Tag Teams, it's a team of, te it's a team of Tag Teams from SmackDown versus, it's versus a team of Tag Teams from Raw. On SmackDown, we've got the Usos, the New Day, uh, Sanity, you, never, you haven't seen them in quite a while, the Good Brothers, the same with them, Colognes even more, facing off against the team captain on the raw side of things, Bobby Roode and Chad Gable. That's weird they're, that they're the team captains. We've also got the B team, Go Go Go. We've got the Ascension, the Revival, and Lucha House Partey. Okay, so those five tag teams on each side face off each other and we are essentially going to have 10, tag, 10 men on one corner of the ring versus 10 men on the other corner of the ring. This match to me is very simple. Who's going to come out with the victory? And to me, it's going to be the SmackDown live side of things because they've always had, well, in terms of SmackDown, they've always had the best tag team division in WWE. And really the only downside of having SmackDown win is the fact that, like I said, the Colognes, Sanity, and the Good Brothers haven't been a part of WWE television in months. So that's the only downside I see to them actually winning, but I do believe that they are going to get the win regardless. So that's 1-0 for SmackDown Live. Let's head over to the other, let's finish off with the tag teams, the bar, the, the the SmackDown Live tag team champions, the bar, made up of Cesaro and Sheamus with the Big Show, face off against the brand new Raw tag team champions, the Authors of Pain, Akam and Razor, accompanied to the ring by their manager, Drake Maverick. Now, a lot of people will bring up the fact that if, you know, it's pretty much a six-man tag, with the managers on the outside, and if you look at it that way, then the bar has to come out with the victory. 
with a, because they've got the big show who is essentially almost three times as big if not more than Drake Maverick but even then even if you take out both managers even if you take both managers out of the equation I would still give the bar the win because they are the best tag team out of the two they have been they have had a longer reign with their tag team titles than the authors of pain have right now and I think essentially the authors of pain losing to the bar because of the big show at Survivor Series isn't that big of a loss so I give this to the bar meaning Smackdown Live is up 2 and 0 to Raw Here's where it gets a little bit more interesting, a little bit more interesting matchups. Another match that hasn't been built up as much that a lot of internet wrestling fans are looking forward to because of the two men involved. But in terms of booking on both sides of the equation, it's pretty lopsided towards Raw. We've got Shinsuke Nakamura. The, the United States Champion, in case you didn't realize that, in case you haven't been reminded of that, he is still the United States Champion. He faces off against the Intercontinental Champion, Seth Rollins. And just want to point this out from last night on SmackDown Live. I love that Nakamura segment backstage about how sad he was because Rollins wasn't thinking about him. That was hilarious. That was a pretty damn good segment. But that still doesn't help the fact that that Nakamura has been pretty much obscure and an afterthought as the United States Champion and you know by just by being there the US title itself has been an afterthought which is not good booking on their part so one thing that's gonna surprise you is that Nakamura gets the win I think Shinsuke Nakamura walks out with the win against Seth Rollins for two reasons. Number one, I firmly believe Dean Ambrose is gonna have to is gonna have a lot to do with the decision of this match. I think Ambrose could come out and interfere or at least distract Rollins and allowing Nakamura to hit the knee to face for the win. But number two, if you want to jumpstart the US title and by essence Shinsuke Nakamura back into for lack of a better word, prominence on a SmackDown Live brand, you have him beat one of the best professional wrestlers on the WWE roster, and that being Seth Rollins. It's not a 100% fix-it for Nakamura. You, they, you, they still have to do a lot more with Shinsuke and the US title to bring them back up to speed to where Nakamura was on the road to WrestleMania. But... I think it would be a great first step into allowing Nakamura and the US title back as a prominent part of SmackDown Live, which is where they should be. So with those results, SmackDown Live is up 3-0 and against Raw. So here's the question, can Raw make a comeback? There are four matches left on the card and they need to win all four to get the win. So. With that said, let's go on to the women's side of things. The women's Survivor Series Tag Team Elimination Match. The Raw side of things has Natalia, Nia Jax, Tamina, Mickey James, and Ruby Riot in their team. Of course, the team captain is Alexa Bliss, even though she won't wrestle. They've, they will also be accompanied to the ring uh, by Alicia Fox, maybe by Sarah Logan and by Liv Morgan because of their alliance with the Riot Squad and Ruby Riot. And they're facing off against the team of Naomi, Asuka, Carmella, and Sonya Deville. And a final SmackDown member yet to be determined, being as Charlotte Flair, who was apparently initially planned to be the team captain of SmackDown Live. Well, she's moved up in the card. So it's pretty simple for me. Even if they add, if they were to add someone else on the SmackDown side of things, well, and if you ask me, I th I think it's gonna be Mandy Rose, because it's either Mandy Rose, one of the iconics, or Lana. I have to go with Mandy Rose right there, but I think the team Raw 
gets the win and they get one win on their side of the thing on, on their side of the column on their side of things and now it's three two one as far as who are the survivors on the raw side of things it's simple it's easy there are going to be two survivors and that's going to be Nia Jax and Tamina you've got to build them up because there are a lot of rumors going out there that WWE is introducing women's tag team championships possibly champions being crowned at Wrestlemania in April possibly we'll have to wait and see so 3 to 1 Smackdown Live still on top of this entire thing then we go into the women versus women match Unfortunately, we can't say champion versus champion because if you heard the news, Becky Lynch was injured during her whole invasion of Monday Night Raw. She cannot compete this Sunday at Survivor Series. So that a whole Becky Lynch versus Ronda Rousey that everyone wanted to see. Well, it's not going to go down. Now, Becky Lynch appeared last night on SmackDown Live and she chose her replacement. That being Charlotte Flair. Now, of course, she had a feud slash rivalry with Charlotte Flair over the past few months over the SmackDown Women's Championship where Becky Lynch came out on top with that amazing last woman standing match at Evolution and now become most likely because of uh, the respect that they earned for each other due to that match Charlotte Flair has been chosen to be the one to face Ronda Rousey now, if you ask me during SmackDown Live last night, I did not think they were going to go with Charlotte Flair as her replacement because it's been rumored for years. Well, not for years. Ever since Ronda Rousey came into the company. WWE wants Ronda Rousey versus Charlotte Flair at WrestleMania. They think that's a match that can be a marquee matchup at the grandest stage of them all. And I, and I was in agreement with them. I also thought that could be a great match for WrestleMania. But now, circumstances change, things change, card change, and now we got Charlotte Flair versus Rowdy Ronda Rousey. Who comes out with the victory? A lot of fans are speculating that because they want Flair versus Rousey at WrestleMania, this might end in a double countout, in a double DQ, in a draw, something along those lines. I don't think so. I think Ronda Rousey gets the win, just like I've been saying in the SmackDown previews and the Raw previews as well. WWE is doing everything in their power until at least WrestleMania to protect Ronda Rousey and keep her undefeated. With that said, Ronda Rousey gets the win over Charlotte Flair in a very competitive match that could very well be the match of the night. Maybe, you know, you never know. So, uh, keep your eyes glued to the screen for that match. One last thing on this whole woman's side of things. One thing that I think could have been activated last night. One thing that I, that I think could now be a possibility is a Ronda Rousey versus Becky Lynch match at WrestleMania for a title. The problem here is being that Becky Lynch is still SmackDown Live Women's Champion, she cannot compete in the Rumble match and therefore she cannot become number one contender to Rousey's title. So that's pretty much the problem, that's pretty much the roadblock. They have to take the title off of Becky have her win the Rumble and go on to WrestleMania versus Rousey and beat her there. You know, have Becky Lynch be the one to break Rousey's undefeated streak. That's an option, or they could still go with Rousey Charlotte 2 at WrestleMania. Moving on, that's Rousey gets the win. That's 3 to 2. SmackDown Live still on top, but their advantage has gone down. A lot. You know, they're on the brink of losing the whole entire thing. Then we've got Daniel Bryan, the brand new WWE Champion. 
facing off against the Universal Champion, Brock Lesnar. My thoughts on what happened last night on SmackDown Live, where Daniel Bryan turned heel on AJ Styles, and he became WWE Champion. By virtue of a low blow. Ho! Oh, how AJ Styles has been victim to low blows during 2018. First Nakamura. What was it? Three, four, five times? I've, I really stopped counting. And now, Daniel Bryan with his low blow and the running knee. And he becomes a four-time WWE Champion. Gotta say, the opening segment with Daniel Bryan coming out and pretty much being a crybaby and a whiner, talking about how he didn't want his name being said, not even as respectfully as it was mentioned by AJ Styles every single time. I, you know, I found that to be pretty heelish by Daniel Bryan. I find I found that to be pretty. Annoying because, like I said, came off to me as being a crybaby. It came off to me as being a whiny little bitch by Daniel Bryan doing that. And so he gets his match, and the heel turn pretty much surprised me. You know, if, if you ask me, I was expecting a Raw invasion to interrupt this match. We would have no winner. The entire roster of Raw, both men and women, would appear on SmackDown Live, interfere in this match, no winner. Styles still the champion. Brian still a part of the of the tag team Survivor Series elimination match at Survivor Series, and we ended off with a standoff between brands, sending it home to uh, Survivor Series. We did not get that. Daniel Bryan is now heel WWE champion. So instead of of WWE giving us a match that. Everyone wanted what could many say was a dream match between Ronda Rousey and Becky Lynch. That changed, and they had to, apparently they felt the need to change that into another dream match. Brock Lesnar versus Daniel Bryan. Who comes out with the victory? And here's the thing, as much as I do not like Brock Lesnar's part-time status, as much as I do not like Brock Lesnar being Universal Champion. Brock Lesnar is Brock Lesnar. And therefore, he will always be protected because of who he is, and therefore he will always get the wins necessary in order to protect his aura, in, or, in order to protect his star power. So, even if it was AJ or if it was Daniel Bryan, I was going to go with Brock Lesnar, the Beast, coming out with the win, even if I did not want that to happen. I do not like Brock Lesnar as Universal Champion. He's a part-timer, and I get it. We're living in a part-time era. That's got to stop. But, like I said, like I've always said, I'm just a fan. I have no control over what goes on in creative over there in WWE. I just have to accept that. But i got to be honest with you. I'm not okay with the part-time era we are currently living in. And, you know, that brings us to a tie. Raw 3, SmackDown Live 3. So who comes out with the victory? Who walks out the supreme brand? Which brand is truly number one? And to that I say, I could care less about this damn brand supremacy angle or rivalry feud that they've got going on. Essentially, brand versus brand or brand supremacy, whatever the hell they want to call it, it does not matter in WWE. They bring it up on the Road to Survivor Series and then we never hear from it again until the Road to Survivor Series. And just to put it in perspective, if it wasn't for the fact that uh, you know, you had this entire uh, uh, unfortunate Roman Reigns situation of him having to take a leave of absence because of the much more important battle he's dealing with these days 
we would have never had brand versus brand at Survivor Series. That was a rumor. That you know, those were the reports. The only reason we got brand versus brand is because uh, Reigns unfortunately had to step away from WWE. So that's just putting it in perspective to how much brand versus brand matters these days. So anyway, let's just play along with WWE's way of doing things. We got the team of the best in the world, Shane McMahon, teaming with Rey Mysterio, The Miz, Jeff Hardy, and Samoa Joe on the SmackDown side of things, facing off against the Raw team of Braun Strowman, Drew McIntyre, Dolph Ziggler, Bobby Lashley, and Finn Balor. Of course, being captained by Baron Corbin, who apparently could not wrestle in this match because, you know, he's an authority figure on the Raw side of things, but hey, Shane McMahon, he's on the SmackDown side of things, and he's an authority figure, and he's wrestling, so, you know, you make sense of that. But one thing I have to uh, add to this is that, yes, I am glad Baron Corbin is not wrestling because I can't stand his character on WWE television. Now, if you watched Raw, you know the deal. If Braun Strowman leads Raw to victory this Sunday at Survivor Series, he not only gets to lay his hands on Baron Corbin, but he also gets a Universal Championship match against Brock Lesnar. And if I recall, he also got a deal to, you know, pick the stipulation for his match against Lesnar. So, Strowman is going to be extra motivated to win this match at Survivor Series. And, you know, I would give SmackDown a, a much bigger chance of winning this match if it wasn't for Shane McMahon being in the damn spot of a professional wrestler. <sighs> you know, I just do not like Shane McMahon competing and actually putting up a good damn fight against active professional wrestlers who have done this for years and years and years on a day-to-day -day basis. I do not like that. You know that. With that said, Raw gets the win because of Strowman, but not just because of Strowman. I think there are going to be two survivors on the Raw side of things. One being, obviously, Braun Strowman, and the other being the Beast himself. No, I'm not talking about Brock Lesnar. I'm talking about Drew McIntyre. I think big things are coming for McIntyre. I think they are... They would, you know, WWE creative would be stupid not to push McIntyre into championship territory. But unfortunately, Lesnar's champion, so that's the main issue. But still, I think McIntyre is going to have a long way to go in being a very big face or a very, or a very big heel. A very big superstar nonetheless for WWE in the coming months, years, possibly next decade. So, that's the Survivor Series predictions for this Sunday. Raw gets to win 4-3. to three. Four matches, one over three. Raw gets to win because that's kind of like, you know, that's always been the case. Raw has always been the flagship show. Even if SmackDown were to win, people will not stray away from the fact that Raw is still number one. That's always been the case. That will not change no matter how much you want to say otherwise. So, what are your predictions for Survivor Series uh, this Sunday? Are you, you know, satisfied about the card that they ultimately have given us? You know, given all these changes that have transpired over the last few days, or over the last few hours, pretty much. You know, who do you think walks out with the wins at each match at Survivor Series? Leave your thoughts, comments, and predictions on the comments section below. If you follow wrestling news, topics, discussions, previews, all that kind of good stuff, consider subscribing. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you dislike this video, hit the dislike button. That's it for me. Till next time.